per your request last year, we're going to do some UI work in Affinity, but not any UI work. We're going to do some dribble fake work, also known as eye candy, also known as something I can't say on YouTube, so we'll call it design parm. My previous video was about using Affinity for UI UX for work and regarding collaboration, but I haven't used Affinity almost ever since that video. I'm, I'm sorry, what? Because I've been the one coding my own site, so I didn't have the need for the mock-up phase, basically. And I find that understanding what can easily translate into code can help us designers scope out what we should do in mock-ups and avoid doing. So let me know if you want an updated video on that or if you want me to show you how I make my sites. And what's great about it is that you don't have to talk to anyone because you're doing it all by yourself. I tend to forget that a lot of people like communicating with others and that I'm the weird one, but I don't, I, yeah. So now that I've killed many people's dreams about the unrealistic expectations of dribble work, let's go over my not so functional, not so realistic widget file. Part one, because as I wrote the script, I realized that I can't do it all in one video because it's too long, so. Part one, today we're making these. And in the next one, we'll be making those. We will start with the line graph. Starting off with some structure. I know, who am I? I made a color palette. Plot twist, I'm not using the color palette, but please pretend with me. We shall start with a rounded rectangle with a gradient on it. Top color is black and the bottom color is dark gray. Then we are copying and pasting that rectangle and scaling down, holding down shift to maintain proportion. We're gonna reposition it and extend that rectangle. Changing that bottom color to black and now we're going to the effects panel to blur that rectangle out. I'm now editing the gradient again, making the top color 0% opacity. It's called forward thinking and I do that sometimes. It's also so that it blends better in case I end up having a color slightly lighter on top or some sort of highlight. Uh, ignore this step, I'm just outlining the shape so you can see the border better. It's not part of the design. Now adding some text, um, what's great when you're design parming is that text sizes just don't matter. Gross decimals and your font size, who cares? Disclaimer, if you're doing something that goes to a developer, it is common courtesy to not do that and have, you know, round numbers, like pay attention to your units, your intervals, and just placement in general. I don't want to receive threatening emails. When I'm done placing those text objects, I'm drawing my line with the pen tool. I have something to say. Robot. Meg forgot to tell you that she's using the white pointer to edit the nodes on the line. And now let's talk about adding a gradient to a line. <laughs> As you can see here, I'm still on the white pointer, not on the gradient tool. Select gradient, but I still don't have the gradient bar showing, which is a bit annoying. And using the color dropper, it, it, it does change the selection to a solid color line. Why? Why? Which I don't want. And let's try with the gradient tool. And there's a little bit of bad UI situation here, I find, where you have to use a drop down here because it's on fill by default. I don't know if it's just me. It is you. Um, either way, here's my gradient on the graph line that is way too thin. So we're gonna check out the stroke panel. And it's a bit muddy looking here and it's because it's on a lower layer and it was under my blurred shape. Now let's come up with a large number to make it look like the imaginary company we're mocking for is not on the edge of bankruptcy. Making that white so it really stands out because it's a key part of the UI, we need to see it. And I'm copying and pasting that and resizing and double clicky to edit that number. Because our imaginary company is successful, it got a dope growth rate compared to the previous month. I'm going to add a little triangle on top, so using that shape tool, if you don't have a triangle, long press on that button with a little mark in the corner to open the drop down. It shows in the green cyan gradient and that's because the last color I used in that file. Selecting both the triangle and the growth rate text and hitting G to add a gradient to both. And when you do that, the gradient coordinates are applied to both objects. You don't have one gradient per object, if that makes any sense. It does not! I have most of my objects, so adjusting things a little bit and removing my outline and copying and pasting the triangle to make the month a link to edit the timeline. 
which is stupid because it's a widget you wouldn't have the time selector on the widget you would have the time selector somewhere else likely on top of the screen what is going on inside their head and i adjust its spacing again i need a sound effect for that so i don't have to say it 17 times in the video there you go so I now want to make a little number bubble that specifies the revenue on the particular day. So copy and pasting the monthly revenue and shrinking. Did I forget the dollar sign? Yes, I did. <laughs> so the bubble is a rounded rectangle, dragging that little red dot to adjust the angle and hit G and drag to set a gradient and trying out 50 shades of green. Um, I kind of want to glow cast sideways um, as if the edge was pulling the light a little bit. Again, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so I'm drawing a shape and I am masking it by dragging it inside the rounded rectangle. If you've never used Affinity before, that's the groundbreaking part of it. It does cut or mask items that are put inside a shape, which is great. That's a good example of something that is particularly design parmi here like building that into code is not impossible but it takes a whole new level of effort and it's definitely not necessary for the user experience so great for dribble not so realistic for real life applications also the text is not super readable so i'm adding a drop shadow with a dusty blue color so that we have a shadow but it's not super visible I'm now trying to find a background color that is not gray, so I landed on something pretty similar to the iPhone 12 blue. I want to detach the widget from the background, so I'm gonna add a color in the right bottom corner too. For that, I am going to mask an ellipse with the edge by dragging it inside a rounded rectangle, just like we did for the cast glow. I'm placing the ellipse under the glow and under the dark blurred rectangle because I want the ellipse as a background. I am blurring it and trying out some colors. The turquoise definitely pops and it looks cool to me, obviously. I think history shows that I'm a fan of bold glows, but this is UI and we want the focus to be on the data, not the widget window. So I'm going to tone it down and keep the fun for another project. As I mentioned, I want the window to detach from the background. So we did that on the bottom, but not the top. So let me show you another mag lazy technique. My recording wasn't clear, so I re-recorded it. So if it looks different a little bit, that's why. So I'm making a backlight by making a copy of the background rectangle. There's a few shapes masked in there. So I'm going to empty my copy and then rotate 180 degrees. And you can hold shift to have more precise increments. And now the gradient is on the opposite side. I'm going to blur the background shape so that the lighter color bleeds out a little bit. And to emphasize that light at the angle, I'm skewing the shape and moving it. And if it's still not strong enough, we can just light up the color and adjust the blur. So I'm changing the font to get the numbers to stand out a little bit more. And I'm adjusting things again. And I am kind of okay with the way it looks. Not really. But let's move on to the next one, which is a time selection bar. Plot twist. Again, I will come back to the previous one in a little bit because I, I am having an idea at the end of the recording. It's not great, but it's, it's okay. So I'm copying and pasting the widget background from the previous one and I am taking out the cast green light shape and setting the lighter color on the right. I'm copying the pill shape from the previous widget as well and setting a white outline on the widget shape just for visibility. Again, not part of the design. Setting up the size of the pill selector and to no one's surprise, copying a text block from the previous widget as well. Setting the color to white and changing the weight of the font. I, it's super small, so we're gonna scale it up a little bit. Even with the adjusted gradient, it's still not super readable. So we're doing the same thing we did earlier on the previous pill. We're gonna add a drop shadow on the text. Now we're gonna make the unselected pills 
with a black background and trying to set up the side padding which is ironic because that's one of those things that are way more painful to make in affinity than it is with code again this is design parm so it's all optical it doesn't really matter i want the unselected pills to be less visible so i'm going for a smaller font weight and muting that color next step is to set up the cast highlight <laughs> I don't really need the custom shape here, so I'm deleting it, and I'm going to use an ellipse instead. I'm picking up the colors from other shapes, and I want the lighter color closer to the edge here. I am not loving the way the pill overlaps here, so I'm flipping the other way um, to have the lime color on the left edge. Remember the plot twist? Yeah, we're, we're there. I want to go over the cast light. And I want to set up a specific point on the graph to represent what the data is pointing at because it's kind of like unclear right now. So I'm setting up an ellipse there with a gradient with another blurred ellipse right behind it, but over the line. So it kind of acts as a mild shadow for that glow point. Why would a glow point have a shadow? I, I don't know, okay? This is Parm. Again, we can do whatever we want. Am I happy now? Still no. But hopefully that helped. I will see you next time with the two axis bar graph. Wow, I did it. Hmm. And the voice widget. If you want to follow me on social, my links are down below. Once again, thanks for watching. Uh, part two is coming soon, but it's me. So that probably means September. I will try to not make it September. I will see you there or not. Um, you don't have to, it's your life. You're free to watch better YouTubers. I will go now. Goodbye.